But as I get ready for the word of God for this, these few moments, I want to go. I want to go to the gospel according to John, the 12th chapter, and I'm going to be focusing in on verse 27. John 12, verse 27. Before we read, we make a confession in our ministry how we receive the word of God. It's got to be the spirit over the mind, not the mind over the spirit. The Bible says the letter kill it, but the spirit give it life. So I need you to stand, lift your Bibles for a moment, lift your iPad, lift your smartphone. If you don't have any of those, just place your hand over your heart. Thy word have I hid in my heart. And repeat after me, if you will, if I receive this word with my mind only. This word will be dead for me. This word will not help me. But if I receive this word with the spirit over my mind, over my emotions, over my fleshly desires, this word will be life for me. Lord, I don't need religious form and fashion. I need life. Look at somebody tell them receive life. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you so much. Look at this passage of scripture and Jesus speaks here and whenever Jesus speaks, pay attention. Whenever he speaks, pay attention. And this is what Jesus said in John 12 and 27. He said, now is my soul troubled, my mind troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause, I came unto this hour. And part A of verse 28 says, Father, glorify thy name. Listen to Jesus speak here. Listen to Jesus speak here. And this is what he says. He says, what shall I say? I think that we will all agree tonight. It does not matter what country you live in. I think that all of us will agree tonight that life is speaking and life is speaking loud and clear. And the question is, what will you say? What will you say? Jesus knew when he set out for Jerusalem. He knew that he was going to face some trouble. He knew that it meant doom and the disciples felt it too. In fact, on their arrival there, had been a roar of welcome in the streets, but Jesus was not deceived by that. He knew that the end was certain. And listen to what he says. And his mind was troubled. Not, not Jesus. Not your mind troubled. I mean, you, you're the one who said, I will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on me. Jesus, your mind troubled? And I need to make it clear this was real trouble. Don't get so deep to say, oh, that wasn't trouble. Jesus wasn't talking. His mind was troubled. It was tortured. It was racked. In fact, the word of God gives us the reason why his mind was troubled. His mind was troubled because of the foresight of the cross between Jesus and his glory was the cross between Jesus and his glory was was the cross 
I, I, I just believe tonight somebody that is dealing with something in your life and maybe you came here and your mind is troubled. I believe it's because here you are, but between you and your destiny, between you and your blessing, between you and your breakthrough, I'm dealing with this, this cross, this, this cross. And so many times we want to ask the question, why? But this is not the question Jesus asks. Jesus does not ask, why do I have to suffer? Why do I have to go through all of this? After all, I'm the son of God. I should not have to deal with this. But that was not his question. His question was, what shall I say, what answer shall I make to life which threatens and opposes me? What should I say as it relates to those fears and those doubts and those shadows that rise up in my soul? What shall I say? This is the question which determines it it determines whether we shall allow ourselves to drift away and find ourselves in a life of discouragement or we're going to trust God and realize that you're in the right place at the right time and you better get ready for the glory of God that is going to be manifested in your life like never before because I got a feeling some miracles are going to happen in this place before you leave here tonight. I don't care how troubled your mind is. You are in the right place at the right time time. The reason why I know it, oh, if you'd have been at sound check today, I think the devil got the message when he checked the sound out. He said, I need to get on out of here because something is about to happen in this place tonight because the glory, the glory, the glory, the glory, the glory is in this place. So Jesus said, what shall I say? I, I, I got to be careful what I say because I'm the head of the church and People are going to come after me, and when, when their mind is troubled, I, I, I want to I make sure that I give them the right word to say when they are going through their trouble. Oh, Jesus could have said, forget y'all. I'm sick of all of y'all. I'm going back to heaven. No, that wouldn't have been good for the church today because you would have been telling people, forget y'all. I don't care who you are. Jesus could have cussed somebody out. Oh, but then some of y'all think you had a right to cuss somebody out. So, cause Jesus cussed. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. What shall I say? What reply will I give? Well, here's the reply that Jesus gave. And I'm going to give it to you because the first word he spoke gives us a clue to his attitude. Here's the first word right here, right here in John 12 and 27. This is the first word. His mind is troubled now. His mind is troubled. His mind is troubled. What shall I say? The first word he says is, Father. Father. Out there in the gathering storms of life. He saw many things. He saw hatred. He saw cruelty. He saw jealousy preparing to bring him down. And many people have looked into the storms of their life and they saw hate. They saw hopelessness and they said, I'm finished. But Jesus looked into his storm and he said, Father, I know it may be a rough period in my life, but devil in hell, I want you to know you're not going to separate me from my relationship with my father. Thank God tonight, I don't know what some of you may be going through right now in your life, but I got some news for you. Whatever you do, don't give up on your heavenly father. Some way, Somehow, he's going to make a way for you, Father. I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. 
Lord. If you withdraw yourself from me, where shall I go? I got to call you, Father, because you're the only one in the midnight hour that's going to give me the strength that I need. I know people looked at Jesus and said, look at your father. He left you out here all by yourself. Oh, but I could hear Jesus say, you don't know like I know. He's right there. He's, he's right there. People may walk out on you, but your father will never walk out on you in the midst of what you're dealing with in your life. Your father will be there. He called his father. I'm a living witness because I'm here to tell you I've been through some storms in my life. I've, I've been through some storms in my life. I've been through a hurricane where we lost our campuses. I've been through a hurricane where I lost my house. I've been through a hurricane where I lost my car. I've been through a sickness in 2006 where the devil attacked my body with cancer. The devil thought that I was going to give up, but I'm so glad in the midnight hour I called my father. I am healed in the name of Jesus. You got to know what to say in the midst of all your trouble. You got to be able to say, Father. Woo! Anybody know him? Anybody know him? Anybody know him in this place tonight? He is our father. So, so listen, now my mind is troubled and what shall I say? And now he's, he's going through something. He's dealing with spiritual warfare, but his question turns now into a prayer. And this is what he prayed. Father, save me from this hour. The cup is bitter. Can you just let this cup pass? I know I volunteered for the job. I said that I would go down, but, but I didn't know people could be this cold. I didn't know people could be this mean. Father, save me from this hour. And then I could see Jesus. He shook himself. And when he shook himself, I could hear him say, wait a minute, Father. Wait a minute, Father. Don't worry about that. But for this cause, I came to this hour. The devil was trying to mess with me, but, but this is why I'm here. I am here for this hour. Not only am I here for this hour, but I'm here for every hour that every child of God is going through to let them know I don't care what kind of hour that you are dealing with. God is about to deliver you. He's about to set you free. He could have said, Father, get me out of this. But he said, no, for this cause. I came to this hour. Then he started having a praise party. Woo. I was about to say, Lord, get me out of here. Beam me up. Take me back up. Let me sit on the right hand of God. But look what he says right in the first part of verse 28. This is what he says. He says, Father, glorify your name. I want you to get the glory out of this. I'm not going to have a depressed party. I'm not going to hold my head down. But I want you to get glory out of what I'm going through. And I've come to speak at the glory dome tonight. I don't care what you are dealing with. God is going to get the glory out of what you've been dealing with. Just like you heard these testimonies tonight, God 
God is getting ready to get the glory. He's going to get the glory. He's going to get the glory out of this. Oh, why don't you touch somebody and say, Lord, glorify your name. Glory. Glorify your name. I'm here to tell you here at the glory dome, there's some people that don't like you. There's some people who are jealous of you now. Oh, in fact, some people even hate you now. But I dare you just to look to the hills from whence cometh your help, and you can let the haters around you know. Just say, Lord, glorify your name. That, that's all I want. I want you to get the every time somebody drives by and see thousands of people gathering into this place. Glorify your your name. I don't want to get the glory. I want you to get the glory. I feel like preaching in this place. I think I got some witnesses that God is going to get the glory. Won't it give you victory in your life? And can I tell you you can have a testimony until you have a trustimony. You got to trust him. If you trust him, he'll bring you through your test. Ah, I come tonight to give him the glory. I come tonight ah, when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. My soul cries out, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, for saving me. When I drove up tonight, saw people walking up to the dome. I, I just looked out the window and said, glorify your name. Glorify your name. Thank you, Jesus, for a Dr. Paul. Thank you for a Dr. Becky. They don't even want the glory, but they want you, Lord, to get the glory. Now, don't wait. Till the battle is over. I need somebody. Shout now. Shout. 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 Is there anybody? Is there anybody? You're glad about it? Yes. I'm so glad that I'm here tonight. I'm going back to America with a new enthusiasm. And I'm going to say, Lord, if you did it in the glory dome, do it again. Do it in the United States. Do it again. Won't God make a way for him? Oh, he will. Oh, he will. Oh, he will. Yeah. He will. Glory, 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 glory. I speak tonight that he'll break every chain. Satan, you get your hands off. If somebody don't know what to say, teach them tonight to say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Won't he come in? Won't he come in? Won't he come in? Give him. Give him the glory. Elabosana. All right. Son, I feel the power of God. I feel the power of God in this. So arise from your rest. 
Lord, I want you to be blessed by our praise as we glory in your, your embrace as your presence This place, can I say that one more time? So, so arise from your rest. Lord, I want you to be blessed. We glory, 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 glory in your, your embrace, as your presence, as your presence,
Thank you for filling this place. Thank you for filling this place. Thank you for filling this place. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Sit down, your glory. Sit down, your glory. Sit down, your glory. Sit down, your glory. Healing is taking place. Send down your glory. Cancer got to go. Send down your glory. Send down your glory. 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 Thank you for filling this place. Thank you for filling this place. Thank you for filling this place. Whew. The glory is in the house. Tell somebody the glory is in the house. Tell somebody the glory is in the house. I need you to look at somebody else before I take my seat and just tell them, I smell. Somebody say, open the floodgates of heaven, let it rain, let it rain. That's all I wanted to do now is open
somebody has come from different parts of the world tonight that need a breakthrough in their life, just tell them, let it rain. Let it rain.